All praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Raka Kadash. Sell it. Uh, Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS who have thought it's this truth 100% according to the Bible. Also salutations to all the hopeful elect who are out there on the highways and byways pushing this word. And all those scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Especially those that may look like the heathen nations but are not and are pushing this word this word as well to seal the hopeful elect. Um, I want to get into this video here. A Milwaukee man charged with a felony for targeting St. Adelbert Church. Lauren Winfrey joins us with more details, including why he says he did it. Lauren. Katie, the vandal targeted the church, smashing a religious statue to pieces. And according to the criminal documents, he doesn't regret anything he did. Take a look at this. It's video from the night of an alarming crime on Milwaukee's south side. The man in the video is accused of destroying a statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe, also known as the Virgin Mary, outside of St. Aldobert's Parish, an act of violence that doesn't sit well with John Calderon, who lives right across the street from where it happened. That's my stuff. Like, people don't have no respect to them. And this was According a demon to the criminal as well. complaint, Joshua Cicero is accused of the crime. He's charged with criminal damage to a religious property. I'm talking property, about the guy in the white car. And if convicted, Cicero could spend three and a half years behind bars. And although a new statue stands in place of the old one, Calderon says he's still offended because he considers this a targeted crime. Racism. Really? Yeah, no announced. They is trying to target the, the center of the south side. Court documents say Cicero caused the scene, causing cars to slow down and people to crowd around. And when asked why he smashed the statue to pieces with a metal pole, Cicero said, quote, they practice idolatry. They worship Mary. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And I destroyed it. And Calderon says he doesn't want to run into Cicero any time soon. We better not find out who was. I'll tell you that. Or what would happen? People know, we know what will happen. <clears throat> so you guys love that fucking idol worshipping. You guys love fucking worshipping that fucking white Jesus with fucking corn hair. Let's go into Exodus. <clears throat> Chapter 20. Verse 4. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven, graven images or any like, likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So there you go. You, you sit there and you worship other gods. You don't love the Most High, the Creator. You hate them. That's, basically, that's exactly what he's telling you. You hate them. You don't love them. You hate them. You don't keep his statutes, laws, and commandments to the best of your ability. You hate the Most High. There's nothing else I can tell you except that. Uh, Psalms. Let's go into uh, chapter 78. Then we're going to go chapter 78 verses... 58 chapter 78 and more page verse 58 and these are just some scriptures I had written down I seen this video and this is what compelled me to this video um Psalms chapter 78 and uh verse 58 Uh, let's go 57. But turned back and doubt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. 
for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him in jealous jealousy with their graven images. Shalaki, let me get my phone on my charger. He provoked him to anger. We all did. Because, you know, we're, a lot of us are born into that whole Catholic bullshit. We get out of Catholic, go to stupid Christianity because we're searching for the truth. Because we know Catholicism has no truth in them. When God heard this, he was... Or, um, Shalakia, verse 58. For they provoked him to anger with his, with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven image. Images. So just our anger is nothing like the most high's anger. Where's Jeremiah? Mm hmm Chapter 8, verse 19. Shalaka, give me a minute. Give me a second to get there. Jeremiah, chapter 8. And verse 19. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughters of my people because of them that dwell in a fair country is not the Lord in Zion. Is not her king in, in her? Why have they provoked me to an anger with their graven images and with their strange vanities? So see, it's uh, precept after precept. The last the last um, verse we read, what it said that we provoked them to anger because of our graven images. So now, and that was in Psalm seventy-eight, fifty-eight. Now we go into Jer Jeremiah eight and nineteen, and what does it tell you in verse nineteen? It says because they dwell, uh, Shalaki is is not the Lord in Zion, is not her king in her. Is like oh, our our powers inside of us, right? He dwells within us. Why have they provoked me to an anger with their graven images and with their strange vanities? The things we do. Some of us don't even read the Bible. That's what we're. That's why a lot of you are stuck in that Christianity. I want to get into Micah. These are the scriptures I had already written down. Micah 1 and 7. Let's go up one. Let's see. Therefore, verse 6. Therefore I will make Samaria as an heap of the field and as plantings of a vineyard. And I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley and I will discover the foundations thereof and all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces and all the hires thereof shall be burnt with the fire and all the idols thereof will I lay desolate for the for she gathered it of the hire of a harlot and they shall return to the hire of a harlot. Go to Habakkuk now. Go too far. <laughs> Habakkuk two and eighteen. <clears throat> what we'll profit the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? the molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. <laughs> Woe unto him that set 
said to the wood, Awake to the dumb stone, arise. It shall teach, behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And if you get that again, we are the temple being built right now. He's in, he's within us. He resides within us. If we could find him, he 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 uses his angels. He uses his prophets, the elders, to talk to us through the scriptures. It's whether or not we can we can understand it in our mind. It's all through faith as well. The last chapter uh, I'm gonna do is in Acts. Chapter 17, verse 29. And I should say the last precept. Verse 17, and uh, 29. Here we go, look. Then let's go 28. For in him we live and move and have our being and certain also as certain also of your own poets have said for we are also his offering for as much for for as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art as man devised. We have not to think that that's what our powers like. That's our own understanding, and it's uh, our, our power is not of our own understanding, and the times of the. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Because he had appointed a day in which in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had risen him from the dead. And with that, I want to say shalom.